It's the NFL on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Raiders and the Fins coming up next. The summer humidity has given way to an absolutely gorgeous fall afternoon here at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Miami Dolphins. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. At CD, the Dolphins, they've got some high hopes for 2023. They feel like they've got the pieces to make a run. They need a little bit of health, but they think they can be right there in the AFC East. And they'll want every game to be a track meet because speed is their calling card. If they're able to sprint out there ahead of people and make them chase, they'll be tough to reel in. And then for the Raiders, this is a tough team to figure out. They stumbled home to a 6-11 finish last year. But you say if they want to turn things around, it has to start on the defensive end. It certainly does. And while they've had some dynamic pass rushers along the way, they've needed more. and They've added them now in free agency and the draft, as well as some new faces on the back end to help shut down people throwing the football. Here's the former Auburn kicker Daniel Carlson to get this one started. And we are underway from Hard Rock Stadium. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The Dolphins set to go on offense for the first time behind their 25-year-old quarterback. Now in his fourth NFL season to a tongue of Iloa. Injuries overshadowed a great season from Tua last season. He led a Miami passing game that was one of the best in the league, and even more importantly, took them to the postseason for the first time in six years. That jump they were looking for from him, it absolutely occurred. Now their 31-year-old running back, Raheem Mostert, and he runs across the 20 to the 24-yard line. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys, let's keep it going. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Tyreek Hill that time, and it's third and short. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. Tug of Iloa going to try and throw on third down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, on third down, he wanted to go to one of his most dependable targets, and that's who he found, his tight end there, to pick up the first, Charles. And he used the proper word there, dependable, and sometimes spectacular, because tight ends nowadays, they can do it all. But they're the guys you trust, especially across the middle of the field where there's traffic. He delivers, and they pick up nice yardage. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Second and 10. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Incomplete. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. 
Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Tua sets up to pass it. And the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. Max Crosby in there to drop it for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Here comes Carter. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. So now it's the Raiders' turn to go on offense for the first time. Breaking them out is the pocket passer from Purdue, rookie Aiden O'Connell. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment. Running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. O'Connell looking to throw on first. Caught on the right side by Adams. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Brings up second and one at the 36-yard line. Second down and a little more than a yard here. In motion left goes Myers. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, I sure wouldn't be surprised if we see more of this as this game goes on because we know they like to use their wideouts either on quick throws or on jet sweeps like what we just saw there. And to say that that one worked well, partner, that's stating the obvious. Pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Here now, second and four. Once again, it's Jacobs. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Now they need two. Here's third down. Trying to run for it with Jacobs. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. Solid gain of 18 and a Raider first down. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. To throw here, O'Connell hitting Mayer here on the out route. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Another 18-yard gain. They had 18 on the previous snap as well. And this is exactly the kind of drive you're hoping for out of the gates. They're mixing the run and the pass well, keeping this defense off balance early. And they're on the march here with another first down. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Brings up second and seven. A handoff. Jacobs running to the left. And he'll take this one inside the 10, down to the 8. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Well, that way, picking up three yards of carry, you and I both know that doesn't cut it in this league in trying to get first downs unless you're playing four down football. Then that's a whole different situation. But I don't think that's what they're trying to do here. Third and four, though, is still manageable. O'Connell from the gun on third down. 
And it's caught. And the Raiders are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, this is what you want to see from your rookie quarterback on an opening drive, Charles. He looks cool. He looks calm. He looks collected in marching them down the field. And, Brandon, I just think the game continues to change and evolve because we're calling these guys rookies. But, you know, they've thrown the football so much at a younger level now. And he's over the line and in for a Raider touchdown. Josh Jacobs taking it in from two yards out. And the Raiders get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. So both sides of the football contributing here early. Their defense forces the punt. And now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed. And I think they're going to take an extra long Reduce look at this one. Under is this a touchdown? That's the question. CD, what are they looking for here? You just need any part of the football to break the plane. You don't need the whole football. It doesn't need to go over the entire white line. It's just that front part of the white line. And if you draw an imaginary plane going straight up, that's what they need to cross. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So take away the touchdown. The officials rule he did not get the football to break the plane. Jacobs again. And he is in. Touchdown, Raiders. Josh Jacobs takes it in from a yard out. And the Raiders have taken the lead. Ah, oh, what a luxury it is to be able to call a bowling ball like Josh Jacobs down near the goal line. 5'10", 220 pounds, and he's not afraid to get in there and get the tough yards. He finishes off this drive with a touchdown run. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And that makes it 7-zip Vegas. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Josh Jacobs. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And this will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off of the end zone. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. And they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. His first carry in their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. Meanwhile, to his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. Third down at six. Going to the air, Tugavailoa. That is caught. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 29-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, 
We see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. On first down, Tonga Vailoa. And his throw is incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Throwing now is Chugga by Lower. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. And again, it's Tunga Vailoa. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Here's a first and 10 at the 14 yard line. Here's Tua. And he'll go down. Brought down at the 20 yard line. Tyree Wilson in there to get him. It's a loss of five. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. And they're able to corral him right around the eight, and that's short of the first down. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And when you're throwing the ball downfield really well, like they have been on this drive, it's really a nice time to work one of the screen plays in. One of my favorite play callers in the game has always told me he starts every game with 10 to 12 screens because if he starts feeling the pressure from the defense, he uses their aggressiveness against them. Sanders' kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. And this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Bradley Chubb, the number five pick in the 2018 draft. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. And O'Connell now to throw. That's caught. It's DeAndre Carter. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. 
but it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. And he is going to lose yardage here. Bradley Chubb came in and got him. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. They will run the draw with Jacobs. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It's a loss of four. Now third down. I think it might be time to move to a different section of the playbook there because back-to-back -back runs, both for loss. Now they have third and long coming up. Really in a hole here, third and 17, following the two negative plays. Now it's O'Connell. To the sideline and incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And it'll be Dolphin football. And the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at about the 32. They'll try and start this drive in the air. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. He may go. And he takes this one back into the end zone, and the Raider defense delivers a score. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Carlson on for the PAT. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Taken at the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Dolphins about set to go to work on offense. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Looking to pass to him. 
And an off-balance throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. And that's a lesson learned from the previous drive. Last time he forced one, and it turned into a pick six. Here, he knows better, and he just throws that one away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Two are going to throw. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Decent gain on the scramble at six, but now it's fourth. Well, there were a couple of extra defensive backs in the game, so he really had nowhere to go with the football despite his search for an open receiver. So he has to take off and run for it, but he comes up well short of the line to gain. After one, a 14-3 ball game. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. Here's Jake Bailey now. Thirty-seven yards on the punt with no return, and it'll be Raiders football first and ten. Now the Vegas offense heading back out there. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and ten upcoming. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and ten. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. Renfro bringing it in over the middle. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. Throwing, O'Connell. Throw left side complete. That's Adams. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Here's Jacobs from the gun. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. They work now on second and nine. Now O'Connell. The open man here, Renfro. Now he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Here's O'Connell. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Slant to Adams. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and that'll make it second down. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. 46 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. We both know it's difficult, but they've made it look effortless out there. Through the air, on the ground, they've moved the ball with relative ease. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. 
They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. Jacob's going to try the middle. And they'll get to him just inside the 15. Even after the strong run we just saw, they're able to corral him quickly defensively. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. And the Raiders are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Off the play fake, here's O'Connell. And this is caught. Touchdown, Raiders. Jesper Horstead, a five-yard touchdown. As his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. And this, let's face it, an important drive if they're going to get back into this ballgame. Think about going into the locker room down 21 to 10 as opposed to 21 to 3. 21 to 10, a little more optimism, a little more bounce around the locker room, a little more discussion about how they're going to finish this thing off. 21 to 3, I think discouragement clouds that locker room. Yeah, and I think a touchdown much bigger than a field goal on this drive just to get into the end zone and get that momentum. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Offense. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Now Tua. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. It'll be a gain of five, and that's going to bring up second down. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay gain. Limited running room as he'll get about three to the 21. It's a game of three. Brings up third and 13. This offense so far on third down, they've hit at 50%. Three of six to this point. This is going to be third and 13. From the gun, it's Tua. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. 
The passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. Well, they had that one snipped out defensively. That's a tough one to connect on when you've got multiple defenders in the area, and it winds up incomplete. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. A good starting spot for the Raiders as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 74 yards on the ground here for Jacobs, and this is a first down. Well, it's kind of fitting. A couple days ago when we met with him, I said, what is it about your running game that's so effective? He said, I like to tag myself as elusive. He was pretty elusive right there. And his teammates appreciate that because they know they don't have to hold their blocks for very long, as one of them told us. If I just breathe some bad breath on the guy in front of me, that's all I need to do, and he's gone. On first down, they go with Jacobs again, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. Fakes the handoff. Now O'Connell to throw. Looking deep for Adams. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Love the idea, love the concept, but you got to leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. He's going to take another shot here. And it's knocked away and incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. Here's A.J. Cole now to punt this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 28 yard line. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Hill diving and he's got it full extension. What a catch. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. It's been a very one sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series and they need a big adjustment here to try and put some points on the board. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Tua sets up to pass it. Short throw hauled in by Croft. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. And that's incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Two and a throw again. And that went to the right side and incomplete. 
some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Forced out to his left. Good work on the scamper by Tongue of Iloa. It's a first down. Fast, slow, it doesn't matter. If you give a quarterback enough room to escape, he can hit you for a big game. You've got to give him a little more focus moving forward. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Throwing now is Chug of Iloa. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Hill. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that will bring up second down. Brings up second and five. Going to the air, Tongue of Iloa completes it to the tight end, Smythe. Only able to gain a couple there, and now we've got a third and three. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Here's Tua. A short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. And he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Dolphins first down. And they get it easily. A gain of five on fourth and one. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion. And defensively, pure frustration. So this drive going to continue following the conversion on fourth. Here's first and ten. They'll look to throw again. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. And the Raiders are going to take over here at their own 22-yard line. And when a team advances as far as they did, got over the 50-yard line, don't you think that drive deserved a better ending? I think he needs to get with his coaches on the sidelines, make some immediate adjustments, and that's what you do. You don't wait. You do it from series to series. Because drives like that, the end with a turnover, that's multiple times they picked him off already in this opening half. On the ground is Jacobs to start the drive. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Ten more for him on that one. He's been a busy man. It's a first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. 
They will run out of the gun with Jacobs. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. 101 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Throwing on first down, O'Connell. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Eight yards on the pickup brings up second and two at the 16-yard line. Second and a couple. Now it's O'Connell. Hitting Mayer here on the out route. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. A solid pickup at 13 sets him up first and goal. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. And O'Connell now to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. I'll tell you what, Brandon, if I see a dime look, if I see six defensive backs near the goal line, I'm changing to a running play every time. And they had six there. Surprised he didn't audible at the line? Very much so. I'm going to count on my offensive line in this situation against the lighter defensive backs and try and push it across the end zone that way. O'Connell to throw on second down. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. O'Connell throwing third and goal. Toward the pylon, but it's incomplete. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. Fourth down, and on comes the Raider kicker, Daniel Carlson. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. The kick by Carlson is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. After the main field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Out comes the Miami offensive unit. Now they get set to take over. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Short throw hauled in by Croft. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Go, baby. 
So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Two are going to throw. He's going to drop this underneath to Mostert. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Dolphins have a first down. Now, that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit. And they get one here in the passing game. Two and now on first down. And that one will fall incomplete. Clock here now, just under 30 seconds to go in this first half. Well, this defense is certainly organized and playing off of each other because the rush is providing pressure and the coverage is forcing incompletions and capitalizing on mistakes. When you get every level on defense hitting at once, you get first half scores just like this one. Two is throw complete there to Berrios. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Looking to pass to him. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. On second down, Tua. And this one is incomplete. They haven't been able to stop them so far this series, but getting a nice little stand from their defense now. Brings up a third down and 10 yards to go. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. And again, it's Tunga Vailoa. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, should be a fairly easy one here. The kick by Sanders is good. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So another good job defensively because they've allowed three trips into the red zone, but only the two field goals. Yeah, that's the bend but don't break, isn't it? And they really didn't get broken at all because if you're running off the field having allowed two field goals and three trips in the red zone, You've actually come out ahead. Yeah, flip it over to the other side. The offense, they'll hope to cash in for six next trip. Yeah. Guys ready to get it all right now. Jason so Sanders barring a touchback, to this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we've reached halftime with the visiting Raiders out in front as we send you up to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We just watched a solid first half from the 2022 rushing champ, Josh Jacobs. He's already over 100 yards rushing for the game and has a touchdown run as well. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
Jason Sanders is to Sanders now to kick it. this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. The Raider offense ready to go here to start the third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it, and in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. 110 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum. Or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top. Or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. He could muster only a yard there, and they'll be left with a third and very short. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Well, it's too early to figure out what kind of adjustments this defense made at halftime, but that's a good start to the second half. They cannot afford to give up more points and fall further behind, so well done to force the punting situation here. Here's A.J. Cole now as he's on to punt for Vegas. Here's Berrios. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that is incomplete here. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Now Tua. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Tua looking to throw on third and two. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. Now they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. Excellent job there defensively. Gave up the underneath to the tight end on third down, and they made sure that they did their job. Got him on the ground and prevented him picking up a first down. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. On the return, Carter. A 41-yard punt, nine on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. A quick throw out to Adams on the perimeter. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And it's second down. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 36-yard line. Oh, 
Throwing O'Connell. They swing that out wide to Jacobs. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 14 yards is the pickup there at a Raider first. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Running straight ahead is Jacobs. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. He's turning in a pretty impressive performance running the football and a big reason why they have this nice lead. And in days gone by, we would clip this out and put it up on the refrigerator, wouldn't we? Clip out the box score. Nowadays, not too many newspapers out there. Maybe you screenshot it online. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Those are the plays this defense needs with a deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. A short throw, and that's hauled in by Mayer. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up a third down. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, can't they? He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And unable to connect, incomplete. Uh, give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. They were maybe hoping for a little bit of a back shoulder fade there, and that's a play that's been in vogue the last few years in all aspects of football. But they couldn't get the hook up there. A 43-yard attempt. Carlson able to put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. Now three more points tacked on, and this margin getting more comfortable by the minute. And with the lead where it is, you can actually feel good about field goals. We talk all the time about scoring sixes, not threes, but in this case, they're just looking to chew up some time and come away with points. After the main field goal, Carlson now sets up to kick this away. Taking it about the one. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Dolphins take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Dolphins offense returning to the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 22. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends, and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. And he'll have a Dolphins first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, 
They're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes there's a little tread left on the tires. Two and now on first down. That one complete to Hill. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And you start to think if it's going to happen for these guys, it's got to start with this drive. Down three scores, they need to start making some inroads. And that'll help the cause there as they pick up good yardage and a first down. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 42-yard line. Tua sets up to pass it. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And all the way in from a Miami touchdown. Braxton Berrios, 42 yards. And the Dolphins are able to cut into that deficit. Well, they went play action there and set it up nicely for him. I mean, he can flat fly, and they hit him downfield. And it doesn't take much to create that extra bit of space that a guy of his speed needs. If you go play action, all you want is just a moment where the guy's covering, take their attention somewhere else, and then he's by him. And once he's by him, there's no catching him. As they always like to say, if a receiver's even to a defensive back, that means he's leaving. Unless that DB is Charles Davis, right? In that case, he left me a long time ago. Come on now. <laughs> Trust me. fielded right at the goal line and all in all a pretty solid return nearly got it to the 35 they'll mark him down officially at the 34 time again to see Josh Jacobs in this Vegas offense operate he's up over 100 yards and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again has a tremendous nose for it doesn't he the ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone that's the combination you want in your runner that's a combination any coach wants and We'll see if he can find that end zone once more. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Out of the shotgun, here's O'Connell. Slant to Adams. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Brings up second and one at the 43-yard line. From the 43, here's second down at a yard. Fakes the handoff, now O'Connell to throw. The left side throw complete to Adams. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Eighth catch for him now, he's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Now O'Connell. That's complete into the hands of Myers. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. That's another beautiful throw right there. Gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. O'Connell looking to throw yet again. Mayer there to bring it in. 
And down inside the 15 he goes. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. They're just going to run a drive route here with their tight end. Let him get upfield about 10 yards, and then move toward the middle of the field. This ball's right on target, and it results in a first down. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Now it's O'Connell. It gets it right back to Mayer. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. Ball at the six here as they work with a second and two. On the handoff, this is Jacobs. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. That solid gainer will put them on the doorstep of the end zone. More importantly, it gives them a fresh set of downs. Nice work right there. Jacobs will score. Touchdown, Raiders. Carlson now to add the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Josh Jacobs. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've got to be pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Open man is Hill. He's got it. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Kind of a dangerous throw there. He's off balance when he gets rid of it. But this is all about a quarterback knowing what he can get away with. And that time, it turns into a completion and a healthy gain as well. On play action, here's Tua. He'll get it once more into the hands of Hill. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. From the 43, it's second and three. Play action, now it's Tua. A quick throw there is incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Tua. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, part of their struggles in the first half was their inability to convert consistently on third down. But how about this well-designed play? Gave himself plenty of options and able to get the hook up and keep the drive going. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 47. 
A run with Mostert up the middle. And he'll work down inside the 45. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Throwing now is Chugavailoa. That going to be caught downfield by Hill. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. That one good for 37 yards. Oftentimes now offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air. Nice chunk of yardage there. And then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Here's Mostert. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. So a decent deficit at this stage in the second half. Four down territory? No doubt about it. There's not a chance that he hasn't looked ahead and said, okay, if we gain yardage on this play, this is what we'll do going forward. If we lose yardage, this is the play call that I'll have ready. This is caught. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyler Croft from four yards out. And the Dolphins are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. But he is such a matchup nightmare down near the goal line CD. And another example right there on that play for the touchdown. It's borderline impossible to defend this guy because that kind of size, he can still get out and run a crisp route, and he has excellent hands. Even if you stick with him, all the quarterback has to do is lob it up and he can win almost any jump ball. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and the lead will be cut down to 14. After the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he returns this to the 22. Here comes the offense again, and let's focus on Josh Jacobs for a moment. He is hoping to find the end zone for a third time, and we sit now in the third quarter. And nothing would excite him more, but I think even more so, his offensive line. Anytime you've got a guy scoring that many times, that means you've done a really nice job in front of him. You're always giving props to the big fellas up front. It's always a good idea. Those <laughs> are some massive men. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. That's pretty much mean and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. Throw left side complete. That's Adams. O'Connell's pass complete to number 17, Devontae Adams. One yard game. From the 34-yard line, here's second and nine. Off the play fake, here's O'Connell. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. He already 
came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Off the play fake, O'Connell. Yeah, to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. Here's A.J. Cole now as he's on to punt for Las Vegas. And here comes Berrios. So both offenses come to life here in this third quarter as this is shaping up for a good finish. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. It's Dolphin football, but they trail here as we get set for the fourth. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Well, still a long way to go, but trending upward. They scored the last time out, you remember. Then their defense forced the punt. Now they try to inch closer, but still ultimately down two scores in the final quarter. A good pick up there, 22. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now a give to Mostert running right. And this will be taken across midfield and into Raider territory. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Tua wants to throw it on second down. And they'll get this on the screen to Moster. And they go backwards here. Losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. Well, certainly those are the types of mistakes they're trying to avoid as they attempt to protect this lead late in the game. And let's face it, they're hoping that this one doesn't cost them in a significant way. Yeah, one guy committed a penalty, but now the entire defense has to pay the price and try and rise up and overcome it. Now left side, a completion to his tight end, and he is out of bounds inside the 30. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. On second down, Mostert. And only able to muster a couple down to about the 27. Marcus Peter is on the tackle. It's a game of two. Brings up third and three. What's the deal, no? I know you They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he's going to be a yard short. Needed four, but got three. When a good play is made on defense, oftentimes leverage is the key to everything. Defensive line not getting turned. All the other guys making sure they're in the right spot. And on that play, they were able to stop him short of a first down. Okay, so thought they might go for it here down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. Sanders kick is good, and that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So he remains perfect, three for three in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now you know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And 
And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away. Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. O'Connell on first and ten. The open man here, Renfro. Yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard at the 30-yard line. Second down and a yard. Here's a handoff to Jacobs. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Quickly a slant to Renfro. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. The passing game continues to be their friend. Even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles, they're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 43. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. That's caught by Myers. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A well-executed 22-yard gain. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Throwing on first down, O'Connell. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Now a second and ten. Throwing O'Connell. This will be caught inside the ten. And all the way down inside the five to the four. That one good for 17 yards. And now they've got it first and goal. Well, normally you see three tight ends in a formation. You have to think to yourself, this has got to be a run. And I know as a safety, when I saw that, I took an extra step or two towards the line of scrimmage. Instead, they threw the ball, and he found one of those tight ends for a very nice pickup. Here's Jacobs. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter. And that's going to be caught for a Raider touchdown. Austin Hooper, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Raiders have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Well, I've heard you use the term put-away drive, and that right there seemed like the definition of a put-away drive. Yeah, it certainly just pops right up out of the book, doesn't it? Because up two scores already, just wanted to possess the football, keep converting and picking up first downs. And if the drive ends in three points, that's terrific. If it ends in a touchdown, Fantastic. Extra point by Carlson, up and good. And the lead is up to 18 now.
Daniel Carlson. Following the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Here's Tonga Vailoa on first and 10. You still hold your breath a little when Tua gets out of the pocket, but there he made the wise call. If there's nothing downfield, just throw it away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Tua going to throw. He'll get this into the hands of Mostert. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. With all the success they've had throwing the football as a pass rusher, you know you've got to come hard when you see him drop back to throw. So I really like this call to counteract that pass rush with a screen. It turns into positive yardage. A lot of times the offense says, just replace the rusher with the ball, and it turns into a good play. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. Short yardage situation. You have to wonder if they thought that they were just going to run it inside. But you have to be cognizant of the back slipping out of the backfield, trying to find some open space. And that's exactly what he does to the tune of a first down. Tua now on first down. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm got is just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. The second down attempt there, knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and it's incomplete. I can assure you, setting up a screen is much more difficult than it appears. It requires excellent timing from everyone on the offense, and a defense's number one goal is to throw that timing off. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Tua sets up to pass it. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. Nice call on defense, rolling out the nickel package for that big third down play. And he did an excellent job locking down coverage and forcing him to try and run for it. And he doesn't get there, which brings up a big fourth down call. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. He stopped to get it done, as you noted, and they did. On first down, Tonga Vailoa. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Looking to pass, Tua. On target over the middle of the hill. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 22-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains.
completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And he's going to have a gain of 11 to the 11 before he's brought down first and 10. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. The quick slant caught. Touchdown! Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that went good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. This taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as these guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. If they can score here, they have a chance to make this a three-possession game and all but put things to bed. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball and continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Nowadays, quarterbacks don't mind throwing in the coverage because of the confidence they have in their receivers to come down with the ball. But sometimes you have to be careful you don't get too confident and throw an interception. The offense on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This time, it's third and three to throw here. O'Connell caught out right by Renfro. And he is going to have the Raiders first down by a couple of yards as they're able to get four there on third and two. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. First down throw, O'Connell. Back to Renfro again, complete. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. 
That one, a first down pickup of eight. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we gotta get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. A first down run with Jacobs won't get a whole lot. Maybe a yard, but that's about all, and it's second down. Not a big run, not an explosive run, but they've held the ball for plenty of plays on this drive. They're just trying to impose their will on the defense right now. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Raider football as we get you reset. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Once again, it's Jacobs. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Now it's O'Connell. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. Well, that's one of those mistakes. That's a fumble that when they get to the sidelines, I know you're mad, Coach, but look, we've still got this locked down, but that's not necessarily true, is it? You no, know, their hopes are slim, but you just hate to give them any hope. You could have sealed it right there. Yeah, could have finished them off and, and taken away all hope, as we like to say. So Tua and the Dolphins down by 11, a minute 52 to play. Can they take advantage of the late carelessness? We'll see as they've got a first down. Here's Tua. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. Yeah, he's gonna be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. A two timeouts still remaining, but scoring quickly, a must. It's first and 10. Throwing Tua. Over the middle complete. That's Hill. Here comes second down at five. Tua. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. And while it's probably going to take a miracle at this stage, if they come down with this one in the end zone, they've still got a fighting chance. That one, however, winds up incomplete. Well, here's a big one. You can just feel it. This is third down now. Now Tua. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So they decline the hold, and that's going to lead to a fourth down. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It will be a 51-yard attempt. Sanders' kick is good, and that will make this an eight-point game. Well, that's one part of the equation. Puts him back within one score, but I'd be surprised if we don't see an onside kick coming up. Yeah, I think you're probably right, partner. They've still got the two timeouts. But without that third one, they can bleed a lot more clock on you. So how confident are you that the defense can hold them deep? I think you're exactly right. I'd line up and play for the onside kick here. So 
So a minute and change to go, and this is going to be an onside kick. And the hands team for the Raiders able to secure it. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Going on the ground with Jacobs. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as it comes with exactly a minute to go in the football game. And they'll come up second and seven. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. The Raiders likely going to get out of this with a victory as they take a knee. Josh McDaniel's going to take a risk here. They will go for it on fourth down. They go with Jacobs, and he's going to have a Raider first down. And that should be the one that finishes the script here. That one, a backbreaker as they wind up converting there on fourth. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything.